This is MC's Voice, narrating Mark Breland's Instagram post directed to Deontay Wilder. Now you can call this the official Mark Breland Speaks. I've had enough. I'm going to say some things that were reserved for my autobiography. Still, by the book, there's so much more. I'm going to add a couple of pics. One, a quote from a daily news reporter where he says, Mr. Breland is usually quiet unless it's something he's passionate about. So true. And this is one subject that has me passionate, actually beyond passion. So I'm not giving nobody this interview. I'll use my own platform since I've been opened like a can of sardines. On the last podcast I was on, damn, they couldn't even wait till the next show to talk about me. I went on that show following my request with them for no Deontay talk. But when you've been holding on to something for so long and you're pissed off about it, obviously anyone can push your buttons and all kinds of shit may come out. But that's not the environment that I would have chose to speak on. So here's Mark's take. Anyone who thinks I meant I could beat AJ or Deontay's opponents now at age 57 doesn't require a response. At my age, the only fight I'll have is the one for my life. I ain't getting hit no more. I've had my share of fights. As a fighter with a little experience, I'm speaking on what I see. I stand by my words that the skill set and boxing IQ I see on AJ and many other fighters that my former fighter fought would not get past a few rounds with me if I were in the same era and weight class, obviously. As far as Deontay is done and I'm done, I meant with each other. I don't have no idea of what or where that man's career is going, and I'm not interested in trying to predict his career. The facts are that my time in the coaching position with the Bronze Bomber changed drastically in the 12 years since I started with him. When he turned pro, J.D.'s called me and humbly stated that he needed a trainer for a great prospect that he had at his gym. Boxing goes like this. You walk into my gym, I train you. I found you and sometimes I manage you too. So Jay was seen as the head trainer in the media, but I was the only one on the team with a boxing resume and I was the only trainer. That was okay with me because of my humility. I didn't have to be the one in front of the camera. I've lived that life. After Deontay became a name in boxing, new members did join the team, and it got to the point where I didn't even have my fighter's phone number. I haven't spoken to Deontay alone in years. The things that I told Deontay to do had to be ran past Jay. Deontay had become untrainable because he was at the point of he know more about boxing than all of us. So teaching a correct jab was not a priority to learn once he continued on his knockout streak. So a coach can only teach someone if they're willing to learn. We would wait for the champ for hours before he arrived at the gym and Jay would inform us of his mood. If he had a bad day, we had to be quiet to not be on the receiving end of his wrath, according to Jay, in an effort not to be fired. And yeah, hitting the bag, jumping rope, and running is not high on the list, so if he don't feel like it, he and Jay didn't seem to understand the importance of those things. So he would make it clear not to ask Deontay twice. If I tried to pull Deontay to the side to tell him what I see, Jay made it clear, don't say nothing. You don't want to make him mad. I've watched this man, Deontay, speak to many people disrespectfully. And although I'm extremely humble and calm, I'm a man first. I stayed on the team because I've been there from the beginning. And I believed with his power and willingness to learn more, he could be a force in the sport. I never thought anything this insane would take place. I should not have addressed who had the water because the accusation is so asinine it doesn't deserve a reply. Anyone who knows a tiny bit about boxing knows we're tested before and after a fight. So that's the end of that ludicrous allegation. And then there's the gloves. 
To that I say, that's the one time I'm glad Jay treated me like I didn't matter. So he does all the head trainer aspects. The witness for the hand wrapping, the press interviews, everything where a camera is involved, except hand wraps, I'm the one responsible for that. I'm not sure if Dee's knows in all those years, I can't recall seeing him do it. Now this chapter of my life, my book, has come to an end, and I won't be talking about it anymore. To the ones who know me, I don't need to say anything, and to the ones who don't, I'm not trying to defend such ridiculous, outlandish allegations. Lastly, at that fight, just as many others, we had no cut man because Deontay won't need it. So I'm not a doctor, but I know blood coming out of your ears and dazed eyes could be a brain issue. And power comes from your legs and his legs were gone. So I made a decision to stop the fight and I do it all again. I have a son Deontay's age. I'm not looking to see him go out on his shield. I hope we all stay safe. There are so many bigger issues in the world. And this is MC's voice, narrating this Instagram post from Deontay's former trainer and champion in his own right, Mark Breland. Thank you for subscribing.